and welcome to our weekly worship online. My name is Elizabeth Harris and I'm one of the ministers here in the Falmouth and Gwenap Methodist Circuit. And today our service comes from Saint Day Chapel. Let me read you a couple of verses from Psalm 25. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Saviour. And my hope is in you all day long. Amen. Lord, as we worship today, those of us who are gathered in person, those of us who are watching online, those of us who are in your presence in a different place, Lord, we thank you that we can spend time with you, that we can speak with you and listen to your voice. Lord, teach us to hear what you have to say. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
God Almighty, you call us to yourself, to know you and to love you. Help us to listen for your voice, to recognise your whisper, to hear you amongst the busy noise of our daily lives. Teach us to hear your call and give us the faith to follow you. Teach us to put your calling into action as we walk with you. May we live each day in your company as we grow in your knowledge and love. Lord, we confess that often we sin against you and against others. Forgive us, we pray. Bless those whom we care about, those who are unwell, those who are bereaved, those who are lonely or those who are just struggling with everyday life. Lord, give us a love like yours that we may reach out to others in your name, learning to become more like Jesus as we grow in our faith. Always for your glory, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Shall we share together in the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
reading for today comes from the Old Testament, from 1 Samuel. It's a really interesting book if you get a time to have a look, read through 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel and the stories in Kings and Chronicles which tell something of Israel's history, particularly of the history of that time when the people of Israel moved from having judges who led the people, made wise decisions in the land, to a time when kings ruled. Samuel, a famous prophet of the Old Testament, had his beginnings of his faith walk with God actually before he was even born and he grew up in a place of worship. So our reading today, which is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, tells us of a time when he was a young boy, a lad serving in that place of worship, along with Eli the priest. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, for the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. The reading that we've just heard comes from the first book of Samuel in what we call the Old Testament, the Jewish Bible. Wonder how much we know about Samuel, a big prophet, a big name of the Old Testament. He was a prophet, so he spoke words that God had given him, messages from God. He sometimes foretold events. And he forth told, he spoke what God wanted to say to individuals and to God's people. He lived about a thousand years before Jesus was born. As well as being a prophet, he was also a judge in Israel, a wise ruler, one to whom people came with their questions with their difficulties, with their disputes, with their neighbours. 
The judges of Israel uh, were not as we might imagine judges these days with a wig and a gavel handing down sentences. There was a bit of that, but it was more about being a wise ruler in the community. You can read all about quite a lot of different judges in the book of Judges. There's a clue in the title. And it speaks of a time before there was monarchy in Israel, before there were kings and queens. The people were judged and ruled over with wisdom by judges. And Samuel was himself a judge as well as a prophet, but he lived on the cusp of that time when the time of judges was coming to a close and Israel was given a king. And all this was happening about a thousand years before Jesus was born. So Jesus and his contemporaries would have grown up knowing these great stories of the judges and kings and prophets of old. He'd have learned them as history. He'd have learned them as part of the story of God. God called Samuel very early in his life. Actually, there's a really interesting story to be read there about his mum. Samuel's mum was a lady called Hannah. And she was married to a chap called Elkanah, who actually had two wives. And Elkanah's other wife, Penina, had children. But Hannah didn't. She couldn't conceive. And on one of their fairly regular visits to a place of worship at Shiloh, she was praying fervently, quietly, but moving her lips, praying and praying for a child. And the priest who was serving there, Eli the priest, told her off. He saw her praying and said, what are you doing? You're drunk. How rude. <laughs> but she explained she wasn't drunk at all, but she was praying for a child and Eli blessed her and she went away and actually she conceived and she and Elkanah had this son Samuel she was so grateful to God that she dedicated him to God's service and that's how the young lad Samuel came to be found in this place of worship at the shrine at Shiloh with his mentor, the priest, Eli. And the reading that we hear today picks up on something of his young life. He's there, he's in service, and Eli, now an elderly priest, is taking a rest. And Samuel is also resting and snoozing there in that place of worship. And he hears this voice calling his name, Samuel. And naturally, he thinks it's the old priest, Eli. So he runs in. What do you want? I've heard you. What are you calling me for? And Eli says, no, it wasn't me. Go back to bed, boy. And this happens a couple of times until Eli cottons on and realises that actually it must be the voice of God. So he gives the boy Samuel instructions. Go back. And if you hear the voice of God calling again, then say, Lord, your servant is listening. And so he does. He goes back to his resting place, his bed, and the voice comes again. Samuel. And this time the boy is prepared. Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. And God does, speaks to him. He speaks to him, he gives instruction, he gives words to say to the priest Eli and his family. Not good words, actually. If you read that story on, you'll find how they weren't serving God as well as they could have and should have. And that was the beginning of this close relationship that Samuel had with the Lord God. God spoke to him throughout his life. And he was instrumental in many important happenings in the history of Israel. Not least anointing King Saul 
speaking words of truth to him throughout his reign. And later on, anointing his successor, King David. There's lots of stories there. Read them when you get some time. But it all started because he listened. God spoke directly and Samuel listened. So what about me? What about you? Do we listen? Have we heard the voice of God? Gosh, it's a question, isn't it? I think God speaks to us in lots of different ways. Maybe sometimes through an actual voice that we hear, but often in lots of other ways. Maybe nudging us a bit towards doing something or speaking to us through the words of scripture or through another person or a circumstance. God prompts us towards action in lots of different ways, bringing to our attention what he wants to say. But I wonder if we are listening. Do we expect God to speak to us? Are we actively waiting? Are we actively listening? And do we recognise God's voice when it comes? Do we think, oh, that's just a coincidence, or that's just what somebody said to me and that's really their agenda? Are we attuned to the voice of God in our lives? I wonder if, actually, in the hustle and bustle of everyday life, God's voice sometimes gets a bit drowned out. We tune ourselves to all sorts of nonsense. <laughs> Things going on around us. The busyness of family and friends, maybe even the busyness of church. The sound of... Radio, television, internet, politics, things going on. We're so caught up with all the noise of life that we're not so good at listening for the voice of God, which sometimes comes loudly and starkly, unmistakable, but sometimes comes quietly. A whisper spoken to us maybe in the dead of night, maybe whisper in our name, maybe just a little suggestion of something. Are we tuned in? Maybe we do hear God sometimes and turn a deaf ear, pretend we haven't heard. Maybe it's more convenient for us to pretend, to not listen, to just get on with our own busyness. God speaks to us. God does call us. God is involved in the ordinary, everyday stuff of our lives, as well as the big, dramatic, exciting, miraculous stuff that occasionally happens. God wants to be properly integrated, walking alongside us in our faith. He calls us to himself. He calls us as family. Maybe when we were first aware of him, as adults or as children, in Sunday school, in our walk of life, when somebody told us something of faith, maybe when we read something or watched something. God calls us and welcomes us to his family. But of course, that's not the only communication. It doesn't end there. The conversation is lifelong. God wants to be speaking with us, hearing from us, having us listen and speak so that he's fully involved in our lives promises to be with us not just a little not just on special occasions not just when we're in trouble but all of the time and part of our discipleship is learning to recognize the sound of his voice 
learning to discern what he might be saying to us directly or through others or through circumstances. Attuning ourselves to the voice of God so that we can respond to him in faith. Whatever stage of faith we're at, wherever we are on our journey with God, may we all learn to listen, to hear and to respond to God's voice and indeed to encourage each other to do the same so that we grow in our faith. Let's listen, for God is speaking. Amen. From the breaking of the dawn to the setting of the sun, I will stand on every promise of your word. Words of power strong to say that will never pass away. I will stand on every promise of your word. For your covenant is sure, and on this I am secure. I can stand on every promise of your word. When I stumble and I sin, condemnation breaks. I will stand on every promise of your word. You are faithful to forgive that in freedom I might live. So I stand on every promise of your word. Guilt to it.
Thank you, friends, for sharing this time of worship with me this morning. It's been good to worship together wherever you are. We are in the presence of God. And I pray that as you go through this week, God will be with you at your side and that you and I both will be open to listening to the voice of God. Let's listen and hear what he has to say to us. A blessing for today. God who knows and calls us, help us to recognise your voice and listen to you this day and always. And bless us in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will stand on every promise of